Good morning, class. This is the week four of our lesson for accounting one. And last week, we have discussed about the accounting equation and also the some illustrations or situations with regard to the application of accounting equation. So, ano na nga ulit yung naalala natin tungkol sa accounting equation? What is the equation in accounting? This is assets is equals to liabilities plus equity. At uh, last week, nagbigay din tayo ng mga situations or examples ng business transactions upang i-apply natin yung accounting equation. And today, we will discuss further about the five major accounts and the chart of accounts. Now, the accounting equation, total assets is equals to total liabilities plus owner's equity perfectly captures the major accounts. These are the statement of financial position accounts further and the statement of comprehensive income has two major accounts the income and expense so let's talk about first the five major accounts first of all what is an account ano ba ang pagkakaintindi natin sa terminong account an account is simply a record of all changes to a specific asset liability or equity item it is like a notepad each item has its own notepad that is used to document all the increases and decreases to that item over time. Ang account ay parang itong ating note or itong bond paper na itong mga increases at decreases ay nakarecord dito sa note na ito. Naka-note siya. So itong bond paper to ay parang account na tinatawag. Ngayon, pag marami kang accounts, kagaya nito, sila ay papaloob sa isang major account. Ang major account ay parang ito, ating folder. Nandito sa loob yung mga specific accounts na apektado ng pagbabago-bago ng value or yung increase at decrease ng monetary value ng bawat account. Now, accounts can also have sub-accounts. Ang example natin dyan ay ang cash. Kung ang cash ay isang main asset account, meron siyang mga sub-accounts kagaya ng cash in bank, petty cash fund, at uh, yung mga sub-accounts na yan ay napapailalim sa isang main account na cash. So, what are the five major accounts? Una, yung assets. Pangalawa, yung liabilities. Pangatlo, yung owner's equity. Pangapat, income. At panglima, yung expenses. Yung didiscuss natin last week, pinahapyawan na natin yung kanilang mga idea or definition. So, yung asset, it is a resource controlled by the entity as a result of past events and from which future economic benefits are expected to flow to the entity. Sing sabi nito, ito ay resources. Resources ito ng kumpanya at kung anong gusto niyang gawin sa asset na yon ay kanyang magagawa. Pangalawa ay ang liabilities. Ang liabilities ay obligasyon or dapat bayaran or isettle ng kumpanya sa hinaharap. Pangatlo ang owner's equity naman. These are owner's claims in the business. This is the residual interest in the asset of the enterprise after deducting all its liabilities. Kapag nabawas na lahat ng liabilities mula dun sa assets, ito na yung owner's equity. It can be derived by deducting liabilities from the assets. Ito nga yung sabi rito. These are the owner's claims in the business. Number four, income. The money received by individual or business, usually in exchange for providing goods and services or through investing capital. 
kapag ang result ng operation ay income, it increases the owner's equity. Expenses, it is the cost of operations that the company incurs to generate revenue. As the popular saying, it costs money to make money. So kapag mas mataas naman ang expenses kaysa dun sa income, it decreases the owner's equity. So assets are classified based on their convertibility into cash. We have current assets. Ang current assets ay nasasabing current when it expects to realize the asset or intends to sell or consume it in the entity's normal operating cycle. Nare-realize natin or nakoconsume sa normal operating cycle ng business. It holds the asset primarily for the purpose of trading. It expects to realize the asset within 12 months after the reporting date. The asset is cash or cash equivalent unless it is restricted from being exchanged or used to settle a liability for at least 12 months after the reporting date. Ang pinaka-idea ng current assets ay ito ay realizable within 12 months after the reporting date. Ang sinasabi sa letter D, kung hindi restricted yung cash para magamit, yan ay current asset. Pero kung yan ay restricted at hindi magagamit within the 12-month period, hindi natin siya may tuturing na current assets. So, current assets are usually presented first on company's balance sheet and they are arranged in order of liquidity. Liquidity means the speed at which the assets should be turning to cash or the assets nearness to cash. Sa balance sheet, makikita natin na ganito ang pagkakasunod-sunod ng current asset. They are arranged according to liquidity or yung mas madaling i-convert into cash. Accounts under current asset. Yung cash, accounts receivable, yung notes receivable, yung inventories, ano ba itong inventories na to? Ito yung assets held for sale. Ito yung ibinibenta ng kumpanya. Supplies, prepaid expenses. Ang prepaid expenses ay expenses paid in advance. Halimbawa ay renta. Nagbayad ka agad ng advance for 3 months. Yung 3 months na yon may tuturing na prepaid expenses. Accrued income, revenue earned but not yet collected. Nagawa mo na yung iyong servisyo, for example, pero hindi mo pa nakokolekta yung kanyang bayad. Ang nature nito ay receivable. Short-term investments intended to be sold immediately in less than a year. Masasabing short-term yan kapag madaling ma-convert into cash yung investment na yan within a year. Number two, non-current assets. These are assets that cannot be easily and readily converted into cash and cash equivalents. Non-current assets are also termed fixed assets, long-term assets, or hard assets. Accounts under non-current assets, we have the property, plant, and equipment. They are long-lived assets which have been acquired for use in operations. These are tangible assets, meaning they are physical in nature or can be touched. Example nga nito, yung mga buildings, yung mga uh, tables, yung mga furniture, yung mga printer, computer, filing cabinet, at iba pa. Long-term investment, other investment made by the firm that will benefit company for several years. Example nito, yung investment in equity securities. Intangible assets, these are assets that are identifiable non-monetary assets without physical substance. Example ng intangible assets ay ang trademark, goodwill, patents, copyrights. Ang intangible assets ay walang physical characteristics or hindi natin siya nahawakan. Ang website sa ngayon ay kasama rin sa may tuturing nating intangible assets. So, trademark, what is trademark? A trademark is a unique symbol or words used to represent a business or its product. Goodwill, the value of a company's brand name. Solid customer base. Good customer relations. Good employee relations. 
and proprietary technology represents some reasons why goodwill exists. Patents, it is an exclusive right granted for invention. Copyright, this is an intellectual property loss that protects original works of authorship including literary, dramatic, musical, and artistic works such as poetry, novels, movies, songs, computer software, and architecture. Now, we also have the classification of liabilities. Parang assets, meron din siyang current liabilities. So, yung liabilities naman na ito ay within 12 months after reporting date of financial statements. Example nito yung mga accounts payable, utilities payable, and unearned income. Sila yung mga dapat bayaran ng kumpanya within 12 months. Ang mga examples ng current liabilities ay accounts payable, yung notes payable, yung accrued expenses. Ano ang accrued expenses? These are expenses that are incurred but not yet paid. Ang accrued expenses ay kabalikaran naman ng accrued income. An earned income is cash collected in advance. The liability is the services to be performed or goods to be delivered in the future. Dito naman sa unearned income, na kolekta mo na yung pera, kabayaran, pero hindi mo pa nagagawa yung service yung dapat mong gawin. We also have non-current liabilities. Ang example ito, yung notes payable. This represents the amount of money borrowed by the business to the supplier or banks evidenced by a promissory note. So, meron siyang kasulatan. Mortgage payable. This represents the amount of money borrowed by the business from a bank or a lending institution which is secured by collateral. So, non-current liabilities kasi ilalagpas sila na one year. The owner's equity or the capital or the stockholder's equity. After deducting liability, the equity is the residual interest of the owners in the assets of the business. This is also referred to as net worth. So usually, ang accounts under this owner's capital or equity or stockholder's equity ay yung capital mismo. This is the value of cash and other assets invested in the business by the owner of the business. Pangalawa ay yung drawing or withdrawal. This is an account debited for assets withdrawn by the owner for personal use from the business. When it comes to a corporation, the composition of their equity are the common stock, the preferred stock, the additional paid-in capital or the share premium, at yung retained earnings. Ang common stock at preferred stock ay parehong invested capital yan. Ang kaibahan nila, yung common stock ay mayroong right to vote sa mga meeting ng mga stockholders. Meron din silang right na makatanggap ng dividendo. Meron din silang preemptive right which is the right to be offered first to buy additional shares in the event of a future issue wants. Yung preferred stockholders naman, sila ay preferred, kaya siya tinawag na preferred kapag nag-announce ng dividend ang board of directors, una silang mabayaran. Kapag nag-liquidate ang kumpanya o ang korporasyon, una rin silang mabayaran. Pero wala silang right to vote in the stockholders meeting. At kung ang kumpanya ay nagpa-profit, mas nagpa-profit naman ang common stockholders. Mas nadadagdagan sila ng earnings mula sa kanilang stocks kesa sa preferred stock. Ang additional paid-in capital naman ay yung excess over par value. Kung ang capital para makapag-invest ka ay halagang 100, binayaran mo ng 150, yung 50 ron yung additional paid-in capital. Ang retained earnings naman, it represents accumulated net income from operations over several periods. Lahat ng naiipon na earnings or profit ng kumpanya hanggat hindi dinideclared ng board of directors as dividend 
they will remain as retained earnings. At sila ay pwedeng magamit para sa expansion ng kumpanya. Income increases economic benefits during accounting period in the form of inflows of cash or other assets or decreases of liabilities that result in increase in equity. Income include revenue and gains. So, ano ba itong income na ito? Ito yung mga revenue na natatanggap ng kumpanya kung halimbawa sa sales o kaya sa performance of of services. So, ito siya. Ang result dito, kapag income ang resulta ng business operation, dagdag ito sa equity ng kumpanya. Pero kung net loss ang lumalabas, ito ay kabawasan sa equity ng kumpanya. So, ang account titles under income ay service revenue. This refers to the earnings made by any business that is into rendering services. Sila yung, ito yung ginagamit na terms kapag service business. The term revenue is used, not income. This is to distinguish that such an earning arises from the main line of operations of the business. So, kung ang inyong nature of business ay pagbebenta, you have the sales revenue. Interest income, this represents interest credited by the bank to the account of the business arising from bank deposits. So, alam naman natin kung ano ang tinatawag na interest income. Yung ating mga dineposit sa banko, kumikita yan, at yun nga yung interest. Now, the term income was used since earnings from interest from the bank deposits is not the main line operation of the business. Kung baga, side income lang siya. Hindi talaga siya revenue kasi yung interest income ay hindi naman talaga mula doon sa pang-araw-araw na operation ng kumpanya. Sales, it represents the earnings made by any business that is from selling goods or merchandise. Pag hindi sales, we have the service business. Dalawa kasi yan. Pagka sales, merchandising business yan. Pagka service income, we are engaged in a service business. Professional fees, this represents earnings made by the professionals or experts from rendering services to their clients. They are lawyers, doctors, teachers, CPA, etc. So, ang professional fees ay mula sa service business. Dividend naman, this is the revenue earned as a result of dividend declaration of a company wherein a business has invested stocks. Kapag yung kumpanya ay nag-invest sa ibang kumpanya at nag-declare ng dividend, ito yung tinatawag na dividend income. Now, we have classifications for income. The first one is operating income and the other one is non-operating income or revenue. Operating revenue are the revenues originated from the main business operations like sales, service revenues, etc. Non-operating revenue, these are the results of some activities like interest revenue, rent revenue of a business not engaged in renting industry, which do not originate from the main business operations. So, yung pinag-uusapan natin kanina, kapag ang business ay kumikita mula doon sa hindi saklaw ng kanyang main business operation, ang classification natin natin dito ay non-operating revenue. Kung ikaw ay engage sa pagpapaupa ng bahay, yun talaga yung main line of business mo, masasabi natin na yung rental ay revenue or 
part siya ng operating revenue. Pero kung hindi talaga yan ang iyong main line of business, siya ay under non-operating revenue. James, according to Masilito Florendo, from his book, Fundamentals of Accountancy, Business and Management 1, are increases in equity as a result of non-recurring activities or the increase in value of investments. Non-recurring includes the sale of company non-current assets. Ano ba yung non-recurring? Non-recurring revenues are one of incomes or gains that arise from infrequent, hindi madalas na pangyayari and are not expected to continue in the future. Several types of non-repetitive events can lead to earning of non-recurring revenues. Pag sinabi natin non-recurring, maring nangyari lang ngayon, hindi nangyayari lagi, or maring hindi na maulit pa in the future. Example natin dito, a jewelry shop wants to expand its business. Since it, it does not have enough fund, the owner decides to sell some of its jewelries. Take note that the value of the jewelries increase as time passes by, hence there is an increase of investments. The increase of its investment is called gain. Expense Expenses are decreases in economic benefits during accounting period in the form of outflows of cash or incidences of liabilities that result in decreases in equity. Example ng mga expense na tinatawag natin ay yung utilities expense, kagaya ng sa tubig, o yung sa Meralco, yung sa Mariwad, or sa Maynilad, o kaya naman pagbabayad ng internet, o kaya telephone bills, utilities expense yan. Salaries expense refers to the salaries incurred associated with the services rendered by the employees. Sueldo. Taxes, duties, and licenses. The cost incurred in registering the business to acquire the right to operate and to sell taxes. Examples ng taxes and licenses are yung business permit at saka yung sa BIR. Accounts under the expense. Examples ay yung supplies expense. Ito yung mga consumable items na ginagamit natin sa office or the office supplies. Depreciation expense represent the monetary value of an asset decreases over time due to use. Example, yung building at saka vehicle at saka yung mga fixtures natin. Ano ba yung depreciation? Nababawasan yung value ng particular asset na yun. Kung ang tansya ninyo yung life ng building ay sampung taon, kada taon ay nababawasan siya ng value. At yun yung depreciation expense ang ginagamit doon. Doubtful accounts expense, it represents the uncollectible amount in accounts receivable. May collectible amounts ka mula doon sa mga may utang sa'yo, pero may possibility na hindi mo na makolekta. Yun yung tinatawag na doubtful accounts expense. So sabi rito, not all receivables can be collected. Companies or businesses set up contra-asset account called allowance for doubtful accounts or bad debts and collectible. Lalabas ito sa balance sheet or the statement of financial position. Contra-asset account siya ng accounts receivable. Expenses can be classified as follows. Operating expenses at non-operating expenses. So, operating expenses ang tawag kung they are incurred to generate operating revenues like merchandise sales. Examples ng operating expenses, yung renta, salaries, and wages, utilities, and advertising. Kapag ang kumpanya ay nagbabayad ng renta para gawing factory o kaya naman opisina, rent expansion. At siya ay under operating expenses. So, non-operating expenses include costs that cannot be linked back to operating revenues. Uh, example lang naman dito yung interest na binabayaran natin kung tayo ay nag-loan sa banko. 
So, tandaan natin, plus ang accounting equation, assets is equal to liabilities plus capital. So, these are the account titles under the five major accounts. Ano-ano ulit yung five major accounts? The assets, liabilities, equity, the revenues, and expenses. And speaking of those five major accounts, let us talk about the chart of accounts. Preparing chart of account is like washing your laundry. First, you should know your clothes well. Second, you will classify them according to their color. Lastly, you will identify what method to use, whether you hand wash it or put it inside the washing machine so that when you wash your clothes, everything will be smooth and perfect. Parang ganito raw yung chart of accounts, no? Piniprepare natin yung mga account titles na gagamitin natin para sa ating recording ng mga business transactions. So, what is a chart of accounts? A chart of accounts is a listing of the accounts used by companies in their financial records. Take note, listing of the accounts. Lista lang yan. The chart of accounts helps to identify where the money is coming from and where it is going. The chart of accounts is the foundation of the financial statements. So, this is an example of the chart of accounts from Micmax Corporation. Pansinin nyo, ito ang itsura ng chart of accounts. Pinakita rito yung major accounts, yung assets, liabilities, capital revenues, tsaka expenses. Pansin nyo rin yung code or account code. Example, yung sa cash. Ang kanyang account code ay 101, account receivable ay 111, and so on and so forth. Kasama rin dito sa chart of accounts ay yung description para alam natin kung kailan natin gagamitin si cash, kailan natin gagamitin si accounts receivable, kailan natin gagamitin si inventory. Yan. Yung ibang kumpanya, ang kanilang chart of accounts, maaring wala ng description ha, hanggang code na lang or yung iba naman ay ano ang nakalagay instead na yung description. What type of financial statement sila kabilang? So, yung iba, nakalagay dyan, balance sheet. Yung iba naman, nakalagay ay meron din sa income statement. So, yan. Depende yan sa kumpanya. So, in preparing the chart of accounts, each business shall formulate a chart of accounts that best suits its needs. Depende yan sa pananailangan ng Kumpanya. Large corporations may have thousands of accounts and have more digits on their account numbers. Smaller companies may have lower accounts, increases the digits in the account number accounts. It is prepared in a manner such that the five major accounts are grouped and organized. Business should anticipate all specific accounts that can be used in its lifetime that will be included in the list. So, yung mga kumpanya ay nagpe-prepare ng kanilang chart of accounts. Dapat ina-anticipate na nila ano-ano ba yung mga account titles na magagamit natin during the entire life of our company. So, dapat yan ay planado na at naka, nakalatag na sa kanilang chart of accounts. The specific accounts also be coded numerically to facilitate a more efficient posting of the entries to the ledger. Remember that account numbers are assigned to the accounts to facilitate recording, cross-referencing, and retrieval of information. Although there is no standard ways of assigning account numbers, account numbers should be assigned in a manner that the accounts are categorized locally. So, pansinin nyo, halikan natin yung chart of accounts. Pansinin nyo ang mga account code. Ano ang mapapansin natin dyan? Doon sa chart of accounts, ito yung mga nakita natin. Yung assets, ang assigned number niya ay nagsisimula lagi sa 1. Yung liabilities, 
lagi nagsisimula sa 2. Yung equity, lagi nagsisimula sa 3. Yung income sa 4 at yung expense naman ay lagi nagsisimula sa 5. Balikan ulit natin. So, ito yung asset. 1. Liabilities 2. Capital 3. Revenues 4. Expenses 5. So, the first digit shows the major classification of account. Yun ay kung asset, liabilities, equity, income, at saka expense. Second digit shows sub-classification of account. It signifies that this account is a current account in one. The third digit identifies the specific account name. Example, yung sa accounts payable, 210, the first digit signifies that this account is a liability account, yung 2. The second digit signifies that this account is a current liability. The third digit signifies that the account is accounts payable account. So the chart of account is important because it is designed as a way to separate expenditures, revenues, assets, and liabilities. So business can have a clear understanding and view of their overall financial health. So, ang isang kumpanya, halimbawa, no, during the entire course of their business operation, meron pa pala silang hindi na ilalagay na naya-assign na account code sa isang gagamitin nilang account title, lalo kung ikaw ay gumagamit na ng database. No, may programming kayo, meron kayong IT. So, po pwede naman ninyong i-map yan. Pwedeng gawan. Pwedeng gawan ng IT department yan. At napakaganda ng meron tayong account code sa ating paggamit ng mga account title para mas mapapadali natin yung pagre-record ng transaction. Usually guys, no? Lahat ng kumpanya naman computerized na. May database na yan. So kung i-record nila yung business transaction, nilalagay nila nila yung code 101. O, cash na yon. Instead na i-type pa nila yung cash dun sa database or sa data entry, nilalagay nila nila yung 101. O, pagka accounts receivable, code na lang ilalagay. Ganun din sa accounts payable. Mas madali ang recording. So remember, chart of account is important because it is designed as a way to separate expenditures, revenues, assets, and liabilities so a business can have a clear understanding and view of their overall financial health. And that is it for this week's lesson. Now for the questions of the week. Number one, Narcissus Furniture sold one cabinet to Albert but the owner agrees to collect the payments monthly. How will the owner record the transaction? A. An accounts payable from Albert. B. Cash from Albert. C. Furniture and fixtures expenses from Albert. And letter D. An accounts receivable from Albert. Number two question. We have statement one. Chart of accounts arranged according to major accounts. Statement 2. There is a standard way in assigning account numbers in the chart. Letter A. Both statements are true. Letter B. Only statement 1 is true. Letter C. Only statement 2 is true. And letter D. Both statements are false. So, comment your answers on the comment section. So until next week, class, have a nice day.